I will never forget the day that I had major surgery. I mean, I'd already had major surgery once, you know. I'd had a C-section with my daughter, and, um, you know, that that's major surgery. But I, I'd had a gallbladder situation, and I, I'd had a gallbladder go bad early on. I was probably 19 years old when I had my first attack, and um, then when I was pregnant with my daughter, I had many, many more attacks. It just it just made it so much worse, and you couldn't do anything because you were pregnant, and, you know, the baby, and medications, and blah, blah, blah. So you just kind of learn to, to live with them and <clears throat> get through them. And if you've ever had a gallbladder attack, that's a that's a big deal because they are excruciating. They are horrible. Um, I had a woman tell me one time that she will remember a gallbladder attack over childbirth for the rest of her life. I mean, she will remember the two, but if, if she were to lose a memory due to, you know, just retaining the, the, the one that was the most painful, it would be the gallbladder attack. Um, and they're horrible. But, um, so then I had the, my daughter's doctor, um, he was a general practitioner, and, um, or my, my, the guy that delivered my daughter, he did everything, deliver babies, operate, everything. And he had promised that he was going to, um, do the surgery, get the gallbladder out and everything after I had the baby, and we would be done. But then there was, um, an emergency C-section situation kind of with my daughter, and he didn't want to do two surgeries back to back. And then no other doctor wanted to touch me, so I still was stuck with a banged up gallbladder that now after pregnancy has gone completely freaking haywire. You girls know what I'm talking about. Goes haywire. Anyway, attack after attack. And they got so intense that I had my ex-husband taking me to the hospital to get shots. Uh, for the pain and it got to the point where he was just like no you're addicted to the shots and I'm not taking you back out there oh that was a crock of shit I couldn't breathe I couldn't move I couldn't get any position I felt nauseous you know they're horrible and he got to the point where he refused to take me to the doctors anymore refused to take me to the hospital anymore blah 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 so I just kept having these attacks and trying to get through them and I remember the day I was walking through the living room um, and my daughter was about 18 months old and I had a pain hit me but it actually hit in my stomach so hard it brought me to my knees I mean boom I was on the floor and if I'd have been carrying anything it would have been toast um, it hurt so bad and then I had to go to the bathroom and there was a lot of blood and I told my husband I said I think something really bad has happened and we have got to go to the hospital and we get to the hospital we get um, situated and they tell me and I knew I was yellow but they show me actually how yellow I was I was very very jaundiced and a doctor came in wanting to know the story and why I hadn't had this taken care of. And I explained all of it. And he said, well, I'm preparing you for emergency surgery. Well, on the ride over there to the hospital, we had a blowout on the, the car or tire problem. It kept going flat. So while I'm getting talked to by the doctor, my husband has already taken the baby and has left and has gone to take care of tire situations. And by the time he comes back, they're telling me, they're like, you're, you're going into surgery now. And so by the time he gets back, I'm in the operating room. I mean, it was instant. And I remember them pulling me out and putting me in the, in the, in the elevator to take me upstairs to the operating room. And I was just crying, and I was crying, and there was no one there. And um, I remember them wheeling me up to the, emergency, to the operating room, and this girl comes out, and she starts, you know, it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay, and we made eye contact, and she's like, honey, and I'm like, yeah, and I'm recognizing her, but I'm not, and, you know, I've just got all these emotions going on. It turned out to be a girl I grew up with. So, thank you, Lord. Out of a time that I was completely alone, there was no, no family, there was no support, there was no nothing, and I was being wheeled into surgery, and no one even knew, I, um... I had a flash from the past come and hold my hand and be there with me, and, and, and that was just awesome, and it was just perfect timing. But anyway, I go into surgery, and I come out, and when I wake up um, from surgery, it is like 14 hours later. They say when they got in there and they had opened me up, what had happened? Well, I woke up, and you know the IV pumps that you have where... You've got an IV bag drip, and they can have those pumps that are on there that are that are manual that they can run the tubing through or or do whatever they need to. Um, and usually it'll be an IV. 
and um, those poles will hold like four different monitor devices plus usually two IV bags. How do I know this? When I woke up from surgery, I was in a private room and I had four of those poles, four of those poles. Each pole had four devices. I woke up with 16 different monitors on me. Four different things on these poles, different IV bags. I had IVs going into the back of my hands. I had IVs going into the crook of my elbows. I had a pain pump that was injected into my side. I had all of these drainage, three or four drainage tubes that were coming out of my body. I had um, hoses down my throat, hoses down my nose. I had a, um, a catheter in. Yay, God almighty, I hate catheters. I had um, IVs going into my ankles. I had IVs going in behind my knees. I had an IV going into my neck. Um, I had 16 different machines and then several IV bags going plus the drainage tubes and everything else going on at once. And I remember waking up and my doctor sitting there and he said, I've never met a real angel. And I'm just like, what? You know, and I'm all out of it. And he said, you should have walked off of this earth a long time ago. He said, I've never opened up a body and seen a little girl so sick. So sick. And still cracking a smile and running around here until she has to come in. They say that when they got in there, that what had happened over time is that the gallbladder had started going bad and then the gallbladder filled with gallstones and then the gallstones and everything got compacted and backed into the bile tubes which backed into the liver then backed into just different ductings and things that go on there there was also the day that when I fell and I went to my knees there had been some things that had been built up from one way or the other, I don't know, but it had been built up and it had let loose and tore through, actually ripped a, a tear in my intestines, which I had already had somewhat, and I had been leaking um, bile and, and poop and waste and, and urine into my body. So they ended up removing a huge part of my intestines. I actually should probably have a colostomy bag before this lifetime ends, which is awesome. Um, I will, they cut my liver out except for it regenerates itself if you get it down to just kind of where the main arteries are and then it regrew itself. Then they um, cut part of my stomach, got all cut up and messed up because it was gangrened or whatever from the leakage. Um, the bile duct tubing is gone and that is plastic tubing. Um, just a lot of things. I was very, very sick. My liver was poisoned. My stomach was poisoned. My intestines were poisoned. My gallbladder was poisoned. My blood was poisoned. I was very sick. And, um, and I made it. And, and, and eventually my husband came back, you know, and, um, he had come back while I was in surgery and they explained to him what was going on and the severity of it. He says to me that he called family and said, here's the deal, is she may not come out. He said they told him I may not come out of this alive, that if there was anyone that needed to be called, they needed to be called. He promises he made the phone calls. I don't know anymore. I don't care, really. He says his response was that other people had life to live. Other people had jobs. Other people didn't have people to pay their bills, and so they couldn't leave and they wished me well. You know, and that sucked because nobody showed up. No blood relations showed up whatsoever. And just the week before, my grandfather had been in the hospital and everybody had been up there like a week and everybody was exhausted and my mother was staying with them and all this stuff at the hospital because we really thought this was the last round for my grandfather. And I, I had cooked a homemade meal and biscuits and fried chicken and baked my grandfather's chicken and just all kinds of food and smuggled it into the hospital and, and, and catered a big picnic for him and 
see those were the things I tried to do that never mattered and because it's a week later I'm in the hospital fighting for my life and they're saying that's just too bad so anyway I had a very long surgery I was a very sick little girl and and I've had a lot of stomach problems and things since then I, I wish to God I had the money to go to the doctor because I know there's things wrong and I know that um, they can probably fix but I really don't have any options I don't have the money I don't have the car I don't have insurance so I pretty much just sit here and hurt. <laughs> but anyway, wasn't anything like it was back then. So take care of those gallbladder attacks and don't put off going to the doctor. If you can, I understand some people can't. Anyway, peace out.